Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game So Terrican are continuing series on the Steam Deck, more importantly what emulators you should be playing, the games you should be playing on them, and how to get them set up and functioning. And today I'm going to do a viewer requested video because I've been getting a lot of asks about the Virtual Boy, and I think it might be because it's a very weird setup process and basically only half works until you know exactly how to do it. But by the end of the video you're going to be playing Virtual Boy on your Steam Deck and you're going to be having an absolute blast, and in my opinion, owning a Virtual Boy, I think it is better than real hardware. Before you get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell definitely helps us out and if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel we got a patreon link down below as well but the virtual boy was a very weird piece of hardware i did not have one back in the day but of course as a game collector i have acquired one in recent years and while it is such a fun idea the hardware is very difficult to deal with you'll see here that i have the games i own in my original collection i have dumped them and we have zip files you can add zip files to your steam deck but for me i like unzipping them just so we have the raw files it doesn't matter whatsoever it's just how I like to do things so I will unzip them and when that is occurred I'll go ahead and sort the files by type and just delete the zips that way I don't copy games over to my Steam Deck twice I'm gonna keep that library a little bit cleaner once you actually have all of the games that you need you can go ahead and just copy them to wherever you want my tutorials are all predicated on using an external USB drive you can download things or move them onto the Steam Deck via desktop modes browser this is just what I like to do to keep things concise and I know everyone knows how to use Windows I'll go ahead and create a virtual boy folder in whatever external media I want and I will move the games over to there as well just be aware that there's absolutely no BIOS files required whatsoever for virtual boy I just went ahead and drag the games over and I had perfect execution of them every single time and all of my tutorials do use a doc if you need one I'll leave a link in the description below it is not an affiliate link I do not make any money off this but I get a lot of questions about what doc I use and this is the doc that I use for all of these videos capturing getting everything ready for the channel as well as just enjoying my Steam Deck on my television. So once we pop over to desktop mode on the Steam Deck and we pop in that USB device, you're going to get a little pop-up window and you click Mountain Open and you're going to see the screen we just saw on Windows but here and now we have that Virtual Boy folder. So what we're going to do is just pop in there and copy the games that we want to have on our Steam Deck over to our Emudep installation. But this is where things get really weird and I'll explain as I go along. But there is no parser for Virtual Boy so it seems like it actually doesn't work. You just need to make it work in a very different manner than every other tutorial I've showed right here. So wherever your Emudeck installation is, micro SD or on the main drive, you'll see here again under BIOS, we need absolutely nothing. So you can completely not worry about any BIOS files for the Virtual Boy. It has been clean room reverse engineered, so you are good to go. Which just makes the setup process ever so slightly easier. But I said again, on the back end, it's gonna get a little bit harder or more confusing. So we do need to deal with that right there. But once you don't add a BIOS file, because you don't need one, we'll go back over to where the primary Emudeck installation is and you're going to see ROMs right here. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to find for V Virtual Boy. Well, I guess it's not all the way at the bottom, it's very close. This is where you're going to put all of your Virtual Boy ROMs, but honestly, in this instance, it really doesn't matter where you put them because the Steam ROM Manager is not going to look for them anywhere whatsoever. If you open up the systeminfo.txt file, you're going to see all of the different supported file extensions or using .vb, but you could have used that zip file as well. It doesn't really take any more time to load up. It's just for some reason, I like seeing the file extension when I do my tutorials but anytime you're wondering what files are supported if you open up that text file in the individual folders it's going to show you exactly what you can and cannot use so go ahead and paste all the games that you own over into this folder and that's all you really need to do to get this set up but let's go over through Steam ROM manager and find out why you can't actually ingest these games unless I am missing something I have never been able to find a parser that will actually look for Virtual Boy games if you know something I don't leave me a comment down below there's probably some backdoor way to add these to your library but I didn't really want to research too much because this works and honestly if you just want to play games you don't need to spend much time but if you go through all of the different parsers within Steam ROM Manager absolutely nothing shows up for the Virtual Boy I'm not sure if it's going to be added or maybe somebody just missed it maybe there's some issue in the background of Emudeck that I don't know about but you can't actually get your Virtual Boy games added to your library through the normal means in which we do all of these different tutorials that doesn't mean you can't play them it just means that you have to launch them in a different manner and you're not going to get any of that screen art. If you hit preview and parse, there's still not going to be any sort of parser you can use. Just go ahead and head back to gaming mode and I'll show you how you actually play your Virtual Boy games. If you go under emulation in collections, you're going to see the RetroArch executable and that is what we're going to load up. We're going to boot these games within RetroArch versus in the Steam actual OS and that's going to allow us to play all of them. So if you just go down to load content and you go ahead
ahead and hit the A button, you're going to see all the different folders that are going to be on your system and start directory is where you're going to want to be. So go ahead and open start directory and go ahead and hit right. It'll skip pages until you get down to the V's and you're going to see Virtual Boy right here. All of the games we added are here. If you just hit A one more time on whatever game you want to play, it's going to show you one more menu and you're going to be good to go. That's all you need to do to actually play Virtual Boy games on your Steam Deck, but you just can't use the parser to actually get the artwork up there. But seeing something like Wireland running on the Steam Deck in the Virtual Boy hardware is spectacular and this is much less headache inducing than using the real hardware that I have sitting in my closet. I think if you want to play Virtual Boy games, the best way to do it is via emulation, not real hardware. It's just going to be a better experience. Now by default, the screen is going to be red when you open it, but if we go down into the quick menu and into core options, we're going to have the ability to change so much of the look of this right here. We'll get to the 3D mode in just a moment, but if you see the palette, it's going to be black and red. You have a lot of different color options. If I am just playing the game for the most part, I prefer the black and white. It just makes it seem like a black and white handheld game from back in the 90s, something like the Game Boy, except with much better graphics. But you have so many different colors you can cycle through. I think some of these look great. Some of these I don't care for, but whatever looks good to you is going to be the option you get to utilize. I just think that white makes all of the artwork pop a little bit better, and definitely it's game to game dependent. Something like yellow doesn't look good in Wario Land here, but I think something like yellow does have a function later on in different games. But whatever color you want to use, you can change it right there. Now in the 3D mode, you'll see Anaglyph right there, and you can do all sorts of different 3D modes, 99% of which are not going to be any useful to you whatsoever. But one technically is, if we go over here and we keep Anaglyph on, and then you can select a color, whatever one you want, let's just go red and electric cyan, you now have that old school 3D movie look. If you have 3D glasses of the appropriate color lenses, you're going to be able to see pseudo 3D on your Steam Deck screen or on your television. Now I assume about five minutes later you're going to have a splitting migraine and you're going to have some nausea and you're not going to have fun whatsoever, but if you do want to get a 3D look on Virtual Boy emulation on your Steam Deck, that is how you do it. And honestly, it kind of looks good in 2D as well, that sort of sprite breakup on the background there so you get that 3D just works. But again, like I told you, there's different games and different games have different sort of graphics that look better or worse depending on the color you want to use. A game like In's Mouth no Yakata here is going to look good in black and white, but it is a horror themed Lovecraftian game. And as we scroll around through this pseudo first person view, you're going to see one of the monsters right here. And while it looks good in black and white and does help sell the horror aesthetic, if you push down both analog thumbsticks and go to the core options, I think this is a game that benefits with the red color. It just has way more of a horror vibe going on right now and all of that contrasts a little bit deeper in the blacks because of the red but again these are all options you can toggle you can pick whatever looks good to you maybe in pink or cyan this would be a little bit more fun who knows but it gives you the options i just show you where they are now that's the fun thing about this if we move back over to the options you can play around with the different analog controls because don't forget the virtual boy controller had two different d-pads so you can change the controls to your liking but honestly by default they seem to just work perfectly fine for me and if you want to load a new game you have to do it from RetroArch. You cannot do it from the Steam OS because they just don't show up there again. So just scroll back down to your Virtual Boy folder and go ahead and pick whichever new game you want to play. That's the great thing. They boot up almost instantaneously. And if you've never played 3D Tetris in 3D, you should definitely give it a try. I will say it's one of the most mind-bendingly complex things on the Virtual Boy, but it did kind of show off what the hardware was capable of. Because on paper, the Virtual Boy was a really interesting piece of hardware that shares a CPU with the NEC PCFX and you gotta love that system, at least I do. And it definitely did not succeed at retail. The Virtual Boy was one of Nintendo's biggest failures of all time, so I'm assuming a lot of you are going to be getting your first experience with it on something like this. But again, don't discount this platform. There are some fun experiences to be had, and it has an awesome version of Panic Bomber, which I think looks absolutely spectacular in black and white. There are games to play on the Virtual Boy, and that's probably why a lot of you have been asking me to do this tutorial. It's just one of those things. It's a thin library. The original hardware is very very finicky and it breaks a lot. The ribbon cables for the two different screens love to just tear themselves. The glue breaks down and you do need to repair it over time. But if you follow this tutorial, you're going to be playing Virtual Boy games on your Steam Deck. They look great in handheld mode and they look great 4K upscaled on my television as well. But if you run into any issues, leave me a comment down below and I'll try to work through them with you if I have the time. And if you have any particular tutorials you want to see in the future I haven't done yet, leave me a comment down below and maybe I'll get to them. But go play some Warrior Land on Virtual Boy. It's a 10 out of 10 game and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.